medcram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. You know, in the clinic, I'm getting more and more referrals now for patients with long COVID symptoms. They're short of breath after an infection that's just not getting better, or they're having fatigue, or they're just not feeling right. And I thought this paper was an interesting paper to review. This is a preprint that's being evaluated for publication in the prestigious journal Nature. And it's titled Efficacy of COVID-19 Vaccination on the Symptoms of Patients with Long COVID, a Target Trial Emulation Using Data from the Compari E-Cohort in France. And what this paper tries to do is answer the question, does vaccination help patients with long COVID symptoms? This paper received no financial assistance from pharmaceutical companies, and there were no competing interests or financial associations listed in the publication. And the data that they used comes from the COMPARI cohort, which is an ongoing nationwide e-cohort of patients with long COVID in France. And you can see the reference there and the website if you want to find out more about this research program. So this is what they did. They looked at the Compari cohort, and of course there are a number of patients in this cohort, which they followed longitudinally. And the criteria to get into the study is that they had to have symptoms for at least three months, and they had to have had at least one symptom that was persistent. And as subjects in the study got at least one shot of any vaccine in France, and we'll talk more about that, they started to make up more and more of the intervention arm until finally they made up their intervention arm. And they had 455 subjects in this arm. Out of this cohort, they looked at matched controls. And of course, they found unvaccinated, because that was what was in the cohort. And these served as the control group. And because they were matched, they of course had 455. In the intervention group, As soon as they received their first dose of whatever vaccine, that's when the clock started ticking. And just so we're clear on which vaccinations, these were the ones that were available in France. Pfizer was one of those that was available. As it turns out, 78.9% of this vaccinated intervention group had the Pfizer. In terms of the Moderna, it was about 10.3% of the group. There was the Johnson & Johnson or Janssen Pharmaceutical, which was a fairly small amount, or 0.2%. And then the AstraZeneca vaccine, which was about 10.5%. And time zero for each individual is when the subject in the intervention arm gets vaccinated. And then what they did is they looked at 60 days and 120 days, and they had them do a questionnaire. But they also had them do a tool of looking at COVID symptoms. So a question to look at that. And also the impact of these COVID symptoms as well. COVID symptoms, as we'll see here in the report, is known as an ST. And the impact is known as an IT. So the major endpoint of this study was what percent of the cohort was free of any long COVID symptoms at the end of the study? And so when we looked at the vaccinated intervention group up here, the number that it turned out to be was 16.6%. So 16.6% of this vaccinated cohort was completely symptom-free at the end after they had their vaccination. Whereas in the unvaccinated control, that number was 7.5%. That's a difference of 9.1%, or an absolute risk reduction of 9.1%. And this was statistically significant. Now let's look at the data in tabulated form. You can see here that the vaccinated patients here in the middle column and the unvaccinated patients here in the far right column, pretty much the same median age. You can see that in both cases, the majority of the subjects were female, and for the most part, they were well-matched. You can see that in terms of confirmed COVID-19 infections, the time from symptom onset to admission, hospitalization, and ICU hospitalization, and the severity of long COVID at baseline also were pretty well-matched. As you can see here for the primary endpoint, the remission of long COVID by 120 days, and you can see here That was 16.6% in the vaccinated group, 7.5% in the unvaccinated group, with the risk difference at 9.1 
And you can tell here by the 95% confidence interval that this was statistically significant. In terms of this ST score, which of course is the symptom score, and the IT, which is the impact score, you can also see here that there was a significant difference between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated controls, with the vaccinated patients in both categories having statistically significantly lower scores, which is better from a long COVID stance. In the last category, proportion of patients with a long COVID IT score greater than pass at 120 days. PASS stands for the Patient Acceptable Symptom State, and so what we're looking for here is a lower number, which we did see here with vaccinated patients versus unvaccinated, but it was just shy of statistical significance. So since we've talked about efficacy in this case, let's talk about serious adverse events, and we can see those listed here in the vaccinated group. There was one patient with a deep venous thrombosis, which was hospitalized. Another of suspicion of pulmonary embolism with urgent referral to the emergency room. But the most common was the relapse of long COVID symptoms, which made up less than 3% of the cohort. A couple things to remember here is that all of these patients have COVID-19 and had long symptoms as a result of it. So it's unclear how many of these side effects are related to vaccination because we don't have the list in the control group. I think that would have been nice to have in this study. So the authors also talk about some of the limitations. Of course, the big limitation here is that it's not randomized. The patients in the cohort were allowed to select for themselves which ones would be vaccinated. While it's possible that there could have been some motivational factors involved in terms of who got the vaccine and who didn't, it's unclear whether or not that would have had an impact in this case. The other limitation had to do with timing. Of course, the timing of onset for the intervention group is obvious in terms of when they got vaccination. However, by simply assigning that same date to their match control, there may have been an issue in terms of allowing time to pass in exactly the same way for the match control. They say here at the bottom, to account for variation in outcome measurement times, we explored how time since vaccination affected the study outcome and found no evidence of an interaction between baseline and time of vaccination on the patient's symptoms and impact. And that is actually included in the supplemental material in the submitted study. Here's why I think it's an interesting study. If people's immune systems are not up to par and this allows them to not only get infected with SARS-CoV-2, but also have long symptoms from it, it's certainly possible that this subgroup of population might have an increased prevalence of subpar immune systems that potentially could be allowing the virus to hang out in a reservoir, or at least the proteins of which to hang out and continue to have low-grade symptoms without the immune system doing what it needs to do to get rid of the remnants of the infection. Remember in one of our previous videos where we talked about vitamin D deficiency and long COVID-19, there was a young girl who had persistent symptoms for over three months in her GI tract. And when they did the colonoscopy and biopsy, they found remnants of SARS-CoV-2 proteins. Is it possible that vaccination with COVID-19 vaccines is just what the immune system needs in this situation to boost up and to finally clear out the remnants of the infection that are still causing the ongoing symptoms? It would seem here that with an absolute risk reduction of 9.1, that would mean that you would need to treat about 11 patients with long COVID symptoms with vaccination to have one of them completely symptom-free. Of course, a randomized placebo-controlled trial would be best in terms of determining whether or not this was the case, but it's becoming more and more difficult to do that kind of a study, especially in the West, where the proportion of the population who's been vaccinated is increasing. Well, thanks for joining us. And for other videos on how to boost your immune system, such as sleep and light, please look at our YouTube channel and check us out at medcram.com for continuing medical education videos.